Chinese are quite particular about dining. Thanks to their love of food, there is an astounding variety of Chinese cuisine, coupled with unique anecdotes and etiquette. And thus, a great nation of gourmet has come into being. Delicacies are everywhere around us, not just in gourmet restaurants, but in our daily lives as well. Precious and expensive, abalone is a Chinese favorite. Historically, the Chinese started cooking delicacies with preserved abalone as early as during the spring and autumn period. Dried abalone, produced from the adductor muscle of the abalone, is even more expensive than the most common form of abalone. However, dried abalone is tough and it's difficult for it to absorb flavors. Prior to cooking, it needs to be rehydrated and washed thoroughly. After washing the rim of the abalone and mouth carefully and with patience, you need to get rid of the internal organs and impurities. The entire process requires more than two days, but for such a delicacy, it's just the beginning. A veteran cook tells us the success of cooking abalone relies on controlling the heating. Huo hao, or controlling the heating, is a Chinese culinary term, which refers to the degree and duration of heating while cooking. Fire is usually categorized into blazing, big flame, medium flame, small flame, and tiny flame, based on the degree of heat. The bigger the fire, the shorter the time needed for cooking. We already have different types of kitchen ranges, including coal fueled, coal gas, and natural gas, which allow us to change the heat level freely. But it's still difficult to master the concept of controlling the heating because it's not just related strictly to the fire. It's also closely connected to the ingredients, the way the heat is conducted, and one's own cooking skills. Controlling the heating is a complicated and profound subject. Chen Ya Jian, he has accumulated much experience in cooking abalone during his over three decade career as a cook. Today, Chen will make braised abalone, a dish that is highly reliant on controlling the heating. The main ingredient of the dish is the premium Japanese abalone, the best quality dried abalone. Thanks to its big size, it's called the king of abalone. The rest of the ingredients are also quite exquisite to match the high quality abalone. Chicken pieces, pork chops and pork belly are forced to accept a lower position as supporting ingredients. The chicken pieces and pork chops are boiled in water to get rid of the impurities and are then stir fried until done. The pork belly is fried in oil until it turns golden. This is the clay pot for braising the abalone. Put the ingredients into the pot filled with water, and then put the pot onto a special stove charcoal burner. The heat inside the pot has a continuous effect on the ingredients. 
This is how the fire is sculpting the food. The braising process lasts two full days, during which you don't need to stir the food or add any flavoring. You don't even need to keep an eye on it. So, in what respect is the dish deemed demanding with regards to strict heat control? Chen was born in Hong Kong. He first learned to cook at the age of 14 and now has become the master of Chiu Chow cuisine. With one touch, Chen can tell the origin and quality of the abalone and whether it's fresh or not. Chen says the key to cooking braised abalone is that after having braised it for an entire day, you have to remove the pot from the burner at night and put it on the burner the next morning. 不爆它了,它那個汁力涼了,它那個爆魚會把那個肉的味,那個汁慢慢吸收嘛,你再爆的時候呢,裡面那個精華飛發出來. That is how magical the optimal heating is. Even when the flame is off, its effect lingers. Thus, Ho Hao not only refers to the chef's control over the degree and duration of heating, it also includes the mastery over the characteristics and quality of the ingredients. Different ingredients require various levels of heat. The moment when the abalone is fully cooked is also crucial. If the heat is turned off early, it hasn't completely absorbed the flavor of the gravy. But if it's too late, the meat will become tough and hard to chew. After having braised it for two days, the abalone is cooked just right. Its meat is not only juicy, but also filled with the delicate flavors of pork and chicken. The Chinese culinary art also includes the terms of wenhua and wuhua, meaning mild and violent flames. Simply speaking, the mild flame is the flame below the medium level, and violent flame refers to anything above the big level. The ancient Danding sect of Taoism categorized the flames of concocting pills of immortality into mild and violent types. Ge Hong, an alchemist from the Eastern Qin dynasty, had a very detailed description of the use of mild and violent flames in his book. In his opinion, it was just an expression of yin and yang in using fire. Only through the smart and close to nature use of fire could people concoct the best immortal pills. When the alchemy faded and gradually died, the art of using fire was adopted in the world of cuisine. This is She Jia restaurant, located in Mudu town of Suzhou, in East China's Jiangsu province. The artwork Prosperous Suzhou was painted in the 24th year of Emperor Qianlong's reign. Painted by court painter Su Yang, it depicts Suzhou of that period with heavenly prosperity. 30 years later, a restaurant called She Xu Xun was opened by She Han near Zhuangyuan Bridge in Mudu town. Initially, it was a small, family-run eatery selling local snacks. Shi Tzu Xuan had become a well-known restaurant, offering delicacies from Tai Lake when Shi Han's great-grandson, Shi Zhennan, ran it. Those who favored it called the food offered here Shi cuisine. 
in 1929, Li Gen Yuan, a retired senior Kuomintang government official, changed the name of the restaurant to Shi Jia, meaning the Shi family restaurant. Today, Shi Jia restaurant has opened a few branches in Suzhou. The most historical outlet remains the one of the ancient lane, as the old-fashioned coal stove is a must in cooking the restaurant's famous delicacy, Shi Jia sourced pork. The main ingredient of the dish is pork belly, which comes from the shore of Tai Lake. The meat should be marinated for one day and cut into large cubes and boiled in water with high heat. The stewing process is quite short. When the water boils, the meat can be fished out. Pour the homemade sauce into another giant pot and put the meat into it. Cover the border of the pot with a special strip of cloth and add the rest of the condiments, including salt, bay leaves, star anise, fennel, cinnamon, aniseed, and finally sugar. Cover the pot with a food steamer so that the meat is completely submerged in the soup and add some cooking wine and soy sauce and simmer it on low heat for about three hours. The stewed pork piece are placed in a bowl and steamed for another 15 minutes, which avoids contact with air and helps the pork skin have a nice colour. And the meat is preserved better too. Glazing the meat with the Shi Jia special sauce as the final touch, the dish easily lives up to its reputation. After having been stewed for quite a long time, most of the fat in the meat has dissolved. With an aroma so pleasing to the nose, the meat tastes fatty but not greasy, soft and glutinous. The great taste and smell is a credit to strict control of the heating. In making the dish, the use of mild and violent flames has also played an important role. The delicious flavor can only be brought about through changes in the heat levels. Wu Ho, or violent flame, quickly cooks the meat thoroughly, removing the blood and other impurities out of the meat without making it tough. Meanwhile, it shapes the meat, Food steam pushes the sauce into the meat, and the space in the steamer allows the steam, which is a mixture of different flavors, to circulate. Wen Ho, or mild flame, brings out the flavor of the meat, making it thoroughly stewed and soft without losing its shape. And the cooked meat tastes tender and fatty with an attractive smell. Ho Hao is a mysterious and delicate concept in Chinese culinary art. Thus it has aroused the attention of men of letters since ancient times. Confucius once said, badly cooked food is not edible. In his opinion, food cooked with the wrong heating can't be served. The great poet Su Dongpo was well aware of the importance of controlling the heating. Even Sui Garden Recipes, a cookbook, dedicated a chapter to it. Liang Xiao is a unique writer in modern Chinese literary history with a polished style. He had a special affection for delicious food. His book, Food, records as the dish requires high quality ingredients and supreme culinary skills that are usually out of reach for ordinary restaurants harbored the rest of his life. In fact, it's by no means easy to have a taste of the delicacy now, as the dish requires high quality ingredients and supreme culinary skills that are usually out of reach for ordinary restaurants. The dish is called fried to crispy ingredients. 
Zheng Xiaogang is the head chef of Beijing Tiandi restaurant. In his opinion, controlling the heat is the foundation on which all dishes rely on. We can't find fried too crispy ingredients on the menu of Tiandi either. Zhang says the heat control needed for cooking this dish is extremely difficult, and cooking the dish consumes a lot of ingredients. Those who have no knowledge of what it takes to make this dish will inevitably think it's overpriced. The food is not this food, but we should be selling it to the market. I will not sell this food for a long time. This is a very common thing that comes from the people. 或者是比较懂的朋友，他会知道，可能这道菜比做鲍鱼要难得多。Today, Jung has got an order from a regular diner. He is ready to cook fried two crispy ingredients himself. The two crispy ingredients are actually pork tripe and chicken gizzard. Seemingly two simple ingredients. Special attention should be paid when dealing with them. 猪肚呢，有这个肚头的部分，只用肚尖的部分，因为肚尖相对来说它厚一点。另外，它的比较嫩，得用五六个肚吧，大概才能够出这么一盘菜。把这个猪肚仁给挺下来以后，把皮去掉，还要选，把这个边边角角都要去掉。Tough outer flesh of the chicken gizzards has to be removed. 外边这层薄皮还要去掉，实际上取下不了多少，比大拇哥第一个关节稍微的大一点点。The dish requires more than a dozen gizzards. After they are carefully washed, the tripe and gizzards are cut into blossom-like shapes. They not only look beautiful. But are easier to cook as well. 有一点小窍门，在打的时候，尤其是猪肚，要注意你不能说直刀下去，因为它的横断面就太窄了。你在切的时候呢，这个刀要往前推着切，然后再再接上横着竖着，然后再接上花袋以后，才能产生菊花状。Should first be boiled in water. Because your this egg and this ripeness are different. I am first boiling the egg, then the ripeness. After boiling the egg, it is generally about one to one. Then the ripeness is boiled in water. It is generally about one to one. Then the ripeness is boiled in water. It is generally about one to one. Then the ripeness is boiled in water. Then all the stuff will quickly be fried in oil. It takes quite a long time to get the ingredients ready, which serves as a prelude to the final performance. And the stir-frying process lasts just a little over 10 seconds. Decades ago, Liang Shiqiu had described the cooking process of the dish in his book. There isn't enough time to turn the ingredients with a spatula. Cook has to hold the wok and throw the ingredients up, which fall into the wok after having rolled over. The sauce perfectly covers the ingredients. The process has to be repeated several times. It's not a stunt; it's a must in order to control the heating before the fire gets too violent and the oil starts to spatter. Without a delicate touch, how can you do it with such a heavy iron wok? Young's words are almost the perfect description of Jung's cooking today. With blinding speed, the chef finishes the dish in one go. This dish, if it's cooked too much, it's not good. 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 If it's cooked too much, 就是把这个汁全部爆在这个原材料上就可以。However, the dish isn't finished yet. The last procedure is to serve the dish.
，因为中度跟鸡胗超过水，它可能也就四成熟。然后你再用热油一冲，基本上它已经达到七成熟了。再烹汁儿出来以后，基本上这个菜就是九成熟。端到课桌上的时候，它还要再加热，这个时候到课桌上正好是十成熟。The dish is considered a delicacy of perfection. To pursue the fresh and crispy taste, chefs even take into account the time of delivering the dish from the kitchen to the dining table to decide what level of heating to use. In fact, to pursue the perfect heat and taste, Chinese have developed many unique culinary skills. The most commonly seen method is a sort of rhythmic stir-frying. A special way of cooking that left Liang Shuqiu amazed. Relying on the strength of the arm and wrist, the food is tossed continually with a spatula in the wok. This is called rhythmic stir frying. Different movements will have varied heating effects on the food. Rhythmic stir frying is an important basic skill in Chinese culinary art. To master the skill, every chef has to go through trials and tribulations. There are no exceptions. From standing on the fire, cooking this dish has been cooked for 18 years. 18 years of cooking, it will definitely not cook to the standard. The taste of the dish is not as deep as it is now. I once cooked my chef in the process of preparing one dish many times. 不行啊，你炒一遍这点不行，然后炒第二遍，哎，那点不行，是吧？然后炒九遍，我印象非常深刻。火候 is such a subtle concept that it retains such a mysterious character in Chinese cuisine. To master the optimal heating requires intense effort and a knack for subtlety, including diligence, concentration. As well as amassing the necessary experience over time, perhaps because of this, Hua Hao has developed new implications and is now widely referred to in Chinese philosophy. How we behave ourselves and handle affairs rely on Hua Hao, meaning our level of attainment. In the world of Chinese cuisine, what are the masterstrokes in cutting? How have the skills been passed down from generation to generation? In what ways have they added a brilliant palette of colours to our food culture? Please join us for part two of discovering Chinese cuisine.